My parents moved our whole family to Canada when I was about seven years old from Papua New Guinea because the high school that I went to finished, was about to end, like the level. And then usually once you finish the like elementary school period, then you go abroad for high school. So my brothers and my sisters, they went to England for boarding school and the next option was for me to go to boarding school and my sisters go to boarding school. And my dad just thought education is better here. It seems cheaper to move us somewhere instead of always sending us to boarding school. So. Well, like when you live in Papua New Guinea, I only time that I had seen like anything North American was from like HBO. Like that was my favorite channel. He had like three channels, Cartoon Network, HBO and like local channels. So like I always wanted a garage and like snow and like a driveway. Like all the things because in Papua New Guinea you don't it's hot. It's really hot, so you don't need a driveway. I mean you don't need a garage. Everything you keep your car outside. And like houses are on compounds and they have fences. So like you don't have like a neighborhood because all the houses are really far apart. So I was really excited and like then I was telling my friends, they're like, Oh, you're so lucky, da 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 And then when I came, we came in the summer, so that was good. We went to Toronto first. So like the first thing we saw was like CN Tower and like all that stuff. So it was really exciting. And then um, we moved to Toronto. I mean, we moved to Ottawa from Toronto. And yeah, we were there fall. So everything was pretty good. My parents had friends there, so it was pretty nice. It was pretty good. It was just like, and then when it started snowing, like I'd never seen snow before. So that was really exciting. And I had a house with a garage and like a drive. Like I loved it. I definitely like completely different cultures like Papua New Guinea you have like indigenous people and then you have and the indigenous people are black so um and even the school that I went to um, most of the people who are not indigenous that live in Papua New Guinea are like expats from other countries so like everyone is pretty well off and most of them are like it's pretty like multicultural but there's no one extreme like white people that we saw were Australians and stuff like that so when I came here it was like huge culture shock to be like the minority, not even that, just to like be already like stereotyped that you don't know certain things or you don't have like certain money and stuff like that. Because when we first moved, my dad came and he left us here and then he still had, he had like a few businesses in Australia and Papua New Guinea. So he came every few months, but he was primarily living there and we lived here. And my mom doesn't work. She's a housewife and we had this huge house and like people started to ask like, oh, are you like, what does your husband do? Like people became like curious and everyone just became curious. Like why do you guys have such a big house and your mom doesn't work? So like it was completely different culture and like just money wise too. Like people don't talk about money in Papua New Guinea because it's not a thing that you talk about. It's just not. And so when I came here and like, I just remember being in school and people talking about like, oh, I have this gift and my dad makes this much money. And I was just so like shocked. And then even in like the school, like the elementary school, like kids are so like, they talk back to the teacher. Like I just remember the first day I came home and I was like, oh my gosh, like this kid was yelled at the teacher and he told her she was dumb. And I was like, I can't believe that they do this here. This is so shocking. And everything like, is completely different culture like watching tv all the time because you don't watch tv like in Papua New Guinea, it's nice outside it's warm you play you are outside being physical you always have like friends to play with so when i first came like it was it was it was exciting at first but after a while it just became frustrating just like the amount of questions that people would ask you that seemed ridiculous like do you speak english do you <laughs> like, do you know what a car is? Do you know, like, all these kind of dumb questions. So that was really irritating for me. But, like, I'm a very, like, social person. So when I came, it was fine. And, like, people, when you're, like, the new kid, people are either, like, they either don't like you or they're curious about you and they really like you. So luckily, mine was they were curious about me and then they really liked me. So that was good. So it was, it was interesting that way. It was fun. But I don't know. After a while, it was also just strange just because I'd always lived with, like, our whole family together. So like my dad, he stayed for a few months and he had to go back to his businesses and then he just came like three times a year. So that was really strange. Just me, my mom, my sisters, and my two older siblings, they were still in boarding school. So like, it was just a lot of randomness. When my family lived in Papua New Guinea, 
they became really good friends with another Guinean family who eventually, who later moved to Canada. And they came here first to Ottawa near where we lived. So when we first came, they were the people who were there for us, like um, taking us to McDonald's and like taking us to get stuff for the house and telling me like kind of winter boots to wear and stuff like that. And he's an immigration lawyer. So like we lucked out that way that he just kind of like told us what to do and he helped us out with that. Um, the teachers were pretty, like, because when I first came, um, I was in the second grade in Papua New Guinea. And then I came to school and I was like, and in Canada, and I'm like, this is, what are they doing? Like, this is so simple, like all the stuff that they were doing. So I, my teacher, she gave me like a bunch of quizzes and I just kept on finishing them. And so she was like, this is so strange. So she gave me like a test that you're supposed to get at the end of the second grade. No, at the end of the third grade to go to, yeah. So she, first she gave me the one for the end of the second grade, and she's like, you did really well. Then she gave me the one for the end of the third grade, and she's like, you did really well too. So then she talked to my mom, and she put me in the fourth grade. So it was like, the teachers are, like, the education system was like, a, there's a big difference as well. So that was good. But I mean, everyone was really helpful. The teachers were really nice. Because, like, when I lived in Papua New Guinea, like, I could, I never really could see the board. But I didn't, like, no one really asked me anything about it. And then when I came here, when I was, like, writing something down, she was like, oh, how come you have to come up to the board to see it? And then she sent a note to my mom, was like, she should go see an optometrist, because I'd never seen an optometrist before. And then they found out I needed glasses. Like, so the teachers, like, everyone was really nice. They were, like, always trying to, like, help out in, like, every way. So it was good that way.